You've got questions, I got some answers. Welcome to another Q&A Friday. Today we cover iPad list, here we go. Uh, Boondockers welcome, is it really free? Bed height, entry height from driver and sliding door, tire vibration update, total van height, I have a recommendation on a 60 day rule that I have developed, and I wanted to update you on the channel meetup we had recently. Lots to cover tonight, including three demos. Stay tuned. Hey, hey, go small, live large viewers. Thanks for tuning in today. Really do appreciate each and every one of you for watching this video. Um, my name is Scott. I am your host. I live and work full time for my Class B RV, a Winnebago Travado. And this channel is dedicated to learning together sharing stories of places, people, and my van life as I roam around North America. So really appreciate you tuning in today. If any of that interests you at all and you have not already become a subscriber, really encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Uh, one to two videos, my goal is two uh, videos a week, and hit the little notification bell. That will alert you when there's a new video posted um, on YouTube. Uh, so Q&A Friday, if you're not familiar with that, you send me the questions and I will answer them and the best ones get some demos uh, around the rig or some of my best practices. So let's get into it. Tonight. So the first question um, comes from uh, Mark Smith. Mark Smith asks about what about the problem you mentioned in an earlier video? Um, was that ever identified? Thanks. Uh, Mark, great question. And uh, the problem was there's a wobble um, in the back tires at around 37 miles per hour up to about 42 miles per hour and then the, the wobble vibration stops. Now I will say that that has lessened um, lately. Um, it started about 6,000 miles. I currently have 18,000 miles on the rig. Um, when I had it into service at Winnebago Motorhomes, they drove it. Um, they said it was probably a tire issue, that it wasn't anything uh, chassis related, and they recommended I take it to a Ram Promaster dealer to identify. But my guess is there was some unevenness in the actual tires themselves, which the first Dodge uh, Ram Promaster dealer uh, 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 thought was the issue. And since they've worn a little bit since then, you know, 6,000 miles then, 18,000 miles now, it's much less noticeable. So, um, kind of a weirdness still, um, but it's not catastrophic. And I really want to change out the tires anyway, probably the next 10,000 miles. So, uh, everybody said it's no harm, no foul. So, keep an eye on it, keep the tire pressure where it should be, and we're fine. So, not much of a what the hell's the problem and how do we fix it, but we're kind of living through it. Great question, Mark. Thanks for asking. Next question comes from Bev N, a frequent question asker on Q&A Fridays. Really do appreciate that. Um, Bev wants to know, um, is the boondockers really free or is a gratuity of some type expected? A uh, time limit of stay? Uh, how are these places approved? Uh, are they safe to stay if traveling alone? Great questions. I use Boondocker Welcome. I've used it now two or three times and it very much is free. Um, you're actually staying on private property. Unlike Harvest Host, uh, where it's commercial property and there is, I would say, an expectation that you would purchase uh, some of the goods or services on the commercial property that you're staying at, um, whether it's a golf course, a farm, a winery, a brewery. Um, in my mind, you do get to stay for free, but you know you spend 10, 15, 20 bucks on stuff, um, stuff that I would personally buy anyway, so it's not a big deal. On um, Boondockers Welcome, again, there is no expectation on exchange of money. The only uh, difference to that would be is if you are using some of their services, so water or power, there is on the Boondockers Welcome website a recommendation that the guest, that would be me, uh, give the host, that would be the person's place I'm staying, um, a few bucks to you know uh, pay, uh, pay for the resources used. Um, I've never used the resources because I'm fully self-contained, so not a big deal for me. Um, and you um, ask about host approval. Uh, Bev, and um, I haven't completed the profile uh, as a host, but I can say as a guest, it's a you know a thorough profile. There's no background checks, no no inspections, nothing like that. Um, but I think the best 
um, way to describe um, the safety and the host quality control and guest quality control for that matter is if you're familiar with Airbnb where there is the the guest is rating the host and the host is rating the guest so it's a transparent two-way public uh, posting a review of each side of that equation and boondockers welcome does the same thing so if you read a host reviews uh, placed there by guests and they're not overly complimentary most people kind of move on as would i um, you asked about traveling alone boy the last few months i've met a lot of solar travelers both male and female and i have yet to run into one that has any real issues to talk about uh, if you roll into an area and it looks sketchy uh, in the daytime i would probably get guess it gets sketchy at nighttime and i would just keep moving um, uh, like Deb from the channel meetup uh, she runs solo and again hasn't had any any real issues it's just a gut check on you know, is this place safe what's the what's the neighborhood look like um, what's the uh, you know the maintenance of the buildings and, and things like, like that so um, that's not really a boondockers welcome although it could be um, if it's kind of a, a rundown place in a rundown neighborhood my would probably pass on that uh, in that uh, location so great question Bev thank you as always for asking viewer Lindy this might be your first time Lindy asking a question if so I really appreciate that um, asks about the bed height so uh, let's uh, let's go measure the bed so I've laid the bed down and what I'm gonna do is measure this we've done this um, before but let's just do a quick one again for Lindy that's a great question all right Lindy from the floor to the top of the mattress let's call it 35 inches so just under three feet um, and what I found is I just kind of lift up on off of my tippy toes and kind of push myself um, onto the bed. I can demonstrate that quick. What I would not recommend doing, I would not recommend using the shower basin, um, which is um, it's about five inches. So I would not use that as a step into the into the bed. Um, while it's you know it's watertight and it's a single piece unit I doubt it's really meant to be a step into bed so if three feet climbing three feet um, kind of hiking your knee up is gonna be a challenge I'd recommend getting a, a folding stool step stool probably store it under here um, there's a little few little places you can probably store that pretty easily uh, but I would um, yeah just get a little step stool because this is what it looks like to get in Take off the shoes so again, I just kind of tippy toe and in I go. So not a big deal, but uh, for some that are, you know, kind of tough uh, mobility wise, um, I would definitely get a little stepping stool. Great question. All right. So a little bed measurement there for you. So a great question by Tenacious S1. Tenacious S1. Love that. Love that name. Um, says he has a bit of an unusual question. Um, asks uh, if I, when I hit the road for a trip uh, or even around town, do I use the driver's door to take off or do I use the sliding door? And I would say when I'm in travel mode, um, Tenacious S1, I definitely use the driver door to get in and out. Um, whether it's to check my placement, get gasoline, run into the grocery, now, weirdly, or maybe not, when I'm returning from the grocery, I actually use a sliding door to open and bring the groceries in because it would be kind of a hassle to drag it through the cab. Uh, so it kind of depends on what I'm doing. And once I'm parked and I'm kind of you know, stationary, I use the um, sliding door 90% of the time. It's the primary mode of egress and ingress. Vocabulary for you guys. Uh, so great question, and um, let's, uh, so Tenacious S1 asks about the, the entry height of sliding door and said driver door. So let's, let's take a look at that. Tenacious, uh, here's the measurements on the first step to the um, rail and then into the actual rig. So let's measure ground to... Uh, to the rail. What the hell is this thing called? Running board? <laughs> uh, 15 inches. So it's 15 inches from ground to running board. And running board to entry is another, um, let's call it six inches. So total to get into the rig is about 20, 
21 inches to get into the rig. Um, I find myself using the um, running board as the first step and uh, enter that way. So if you're doing this, it's, it's a pretty big lift, so this uh, running board makes a giant, giant difference. So, all right, so here at the driver's door, the uh, here's the running board I mentioned. Um, again, it's uh, the ground's a little different here, so it's 15, but in this case, 14 inches off the ground. And into the uh, van itself, um, let's just call it 19 and a half, 19 inches. Um, so again, I always step on this first, and then this, um, and then jump into the rig. So hopefully that helps. Um, so I kind of do the two-step into the rig. Uh, clearly, I've got the uh, cab spun around, cab seat spun around here, but uh, I'm parked, so I always do that. All right, so now we know about the driver and the sliding door height. So last question for the night comes from Cheryl. Cheryl Kuhn, hello. Thank you, Cheryl, for being a frequent question asker. Really appreciate that. Um, Cheryl has asked this now twice. So um, for being tenacious, Cheryl, I will uh, answer your question with a demonstration tonight. And the question is, any chance you'd measure the height of the van, including the air conditioner and any other objects up there? She says, uh, Cheryl says, I'm not so concerned about bridge height as I am about parking garages, uh, like at hospitals and airports. So let's uh, let's go measure. All right, so Cheryl wants to know how tall is Lily? And uh, she's asking for one of the famous uh, Go Small Live Large measurements. So I fashioned up a little fancy thing here. So we're gonna go up and measure. But let me give you a shot of what it looks like uh, before I get up there with one hand. So this is the uh, standard Travato uh, layout, uh, the G, well I think the Travato G, mine's a GL uh, layout. So you got two solar panels, so this is 200 watts of solar, this is 40, 160, that's a King TV, uh, this is Sirius, um, I believe for the antenna, Max Airfan, I've got a wine guard. I've got the wine guard for Wi-Fi and um, cellular there. And the tallest thing back here is the Coleman uh, Mach 10, I believe is the uh, the model uh, for air conditioning. And this is, I've got my um, folding chairs kind of wired into the uh, into the roof rack. All right, so I fashioned the uh, tape measure to pull up as I climb the ladder. So let's, uh, let's do that. Hopefully I won't break my neck. Oh, one-handed. Hold on, guys. One-handed. Two hands. Whoa. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm holding this to about where the top of the Coleman is. Let me go down one step, actually. Whoa. Me and ladders don't get along too well. Kind of like me and staircases in lighthouses. So, so the technical height I'll put right here from Winnebago. Um, I think it's like nine feet four inches and uh, right here where the end of the tape is is 10 feet so my rule of thumb is anything less than 10 feet not going under um, I think technically 9.4 inches is the um, minimum height or the total height of the vehicle but oof but I'm not going in under anything less than 10 feet uh, so, so Cheryl, hopefully that helps. Um, 10 feet, anything less than that, don't go, girl. Let's get off of here. Oh my God, this is killing me. So last point for tonight is what I've coined the 60 day rule. I just wanted to share this with you. Um, so I now have a 60 day rule in the van, and that is uh, if I haven't touched or used something in 60 days, it's out of here. So while I love my table and stools, I have not used it really since I've been full time. Uh, one viewer, um, when I purchased all this stuff, commented that most uh, campgrounds have a picnic table, which is absolutely true. And I haven't really been out in the Wild West yet. And what I found is that the, in a lot of cases, the bugs are bad. So I don't even really hang out here. And when I'm in an urban camping setting, I drive someplace so that I'm working in like a, a coffee house or a brew pub, something like that if not in the rig itself. So 
This is unfortunately going to be donated. So all that I have left from all that gear that I bought at the uh, January RV Tampa Super Show is my grill, which I am gonna keep. And I do have room for that very easily in the back. Even the 60 day rule with my clothing, I have not used any of these clothes in 60 days or more. So not only am I getting rid of the clothes, I'm thinking of getting rid of, or at least taking down this bag. While it's very functional, it's just an excuse to store stuff. And I think it's kind of unattractive and it adds weight to the bed to lift it up, which is not a big deal for me, but for some, again, if you load this bad, bad boy bag up, um, it's a significant amount of you know, two, three, four, five pounds of, of clothing, uh, plus the, uh, the bag itself. So I'm probably gonna get rid of this. Uh, it'll clean it up back here a little bit. Um, clean this up by getting rid of the table. Then I can position the grill a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, 60 day rule. I might even go down to 30 days here, but we'll try 60. And to me, that's a beauty of van life. One of the beauties of van life and RV lifestyle is really boiling the things that you take and use to those that really bring value, joy, and uh, um, meaning to, to daily life. And I'm just really, really enjoying this purging and, and, and refining as I go through uh, the weeks and months here full time living and working in my class B RV. So 60 day rule. Now think about that in your own personal life. Think about your house, the RV you have, want to get. Um, if you haven't touched it in 60 days, unless it's Christmas decorations or maybe Halloween, do you really need it? Can you live without it? Is it a weight on your psyche? Is it just storage? Uh, is your house become a storage unit for stuff you're really not using that aren't bringing things that are not bringing value, joy, and and happiness to your life? So I would just encourage you um, to take a look at that. When Kyle and I started this journey um, 14 months ago, that was one of the things that really was a trigger for me, which was to get rid. Well, not to get rid yet, but to look at the contents of the house and the purpose of the house, which was a very fancy, very expensive storage unit. So I am just tickled to apply a 60 day rule to my class B RV, just to boil down the essence of what I really need to bring and get rid of everything else. And it just has been uh, so refreshing. So with that, I thank you for tuning in today. Please join us next week for another van life travel video and Q and A Friday. And until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on. So this is one of the beauties of a class B RV. Uh, so you can see that my spot is quite a bit more shady in the back of my RV site than here in the front. And though I have my sunscreen in, uh, it's actually in the sun more, which is putting more pressure on the interior AC system to keep the, uh, the unit cool because I'm sitting in the sun. So what makes the class B so cool is I can literally, even with my awning out, not a best practice if you're doing more than a few feet, but I'm just literally gonna move the rig back about five feet so it's in the shade to take the pressure uh, off the AC system because the cab is full of sunlight and uh, the window, the front window really generates a lot of heat. So I'm just gonna move back into the shade a little bit. Um, I have unplugged my um, electrical, uh, uh, electrical cord. Um, and again, another beauty of the Travado, um, Class B's in general, is that um, I don't roll in here and start plugging in my water and my sewer um, electricity. Certainly sit next to electrical outlet, why not? Um, but I don't have all this hookup stuff to disconnect just to move the rig back five feet to get out of the sun and into the shade. So just another reason why I love that, uh, uh, the size of RV and um, couldn't do it really with any of these other guys that are sitting around here. Um, they are literally hanging out in the sun. Um, just gotta love my Lily. So let's back her up a few feet.
and that will do the trick. Now she's in the shade. All right, so I want to give you guys a quick update on the channel meetup that we held at um, on June 1st at Winnebago Motorhomes in Rockford, Illinois. And a giant shout out again, whole Winnebago Motorhomes family, literally family. Um, uh, Mick's wife showed up. Uh, and a big shout out to Kyle, the Winnebago factory rep, came down, spent a lot, the entire afternoon with us. And a huge two, two, two thumbs up to all the folks that came out to the channel meetup. What an incredible group. Look at this bunch of happy friends. And um, I'm just talking Travados, talking RV, talking full-time, part-time RV lifestyle, and then going out, uh, enjoying lunch and craft beer at the Prairie Street um, Brew House. Uh, Kyle, thanks again for picking up the tab, man. Really do appreciate that. Uh, just a lovely day. Everybody came out of there with a sunburn, I'm pretty sure. And um, we'll be doing these more often. I just really, really enjoy it. So if you want to meet in person, Go to my website, gosmalllivelarge.com. I have my itinerary posted there. I'm currently in Wisconsin in Madison area. I'm headed up to the Green Bay and Milwaukee area before I hit Chicagoland to do some flying for work. Um, and then I'm headed over to uh, Indiana and uh, up into uh, lower Michigan and then over to uh, Iowa. Uh, for the Winnebago meetup. So I'm out and about in the Midwest a lot. Check my itinerary. I uh, would love to um, meet and um, uh, uh, you know schedule another meetup and have a group gathering.